So the next part of the can drawing is to uh, do the shading, add the tone, the reflections and all the fine details. Uh, but before we do that, we're going to just check the outline is done accurately. Uh, I've got my shading pencils. You'll have your own favourites of which ones you prefer to use. I tend to like to use a 2B for general shading and then a 4B for putting the darker areas in. Uh, you'll also notice I've got a couple of pieces of scrap paper which we'll come back to in a moment and I've got uh, my eraser and finally I've got a cotton wool bud which again we'll come back to in a moment. So looking at my outline drawing and I can see initially there's a few little things I've missed out. So the first thing I want to do is I want to rub out some of the guidelines. I want to make these areas a little bit more curved rather than pointed. Uh, and I can see down here, I've missed a couple of these out. So I just want to put those in. And lastly, I'm going to have a look at the can. And I can see a couple of other things which are going to make my can a little bit more improved. This area at the bottom, I missed out. Uh, you can see the can. Uh, I'm looking at it at this angle because the camera is above the video. So I'm going to put it there, but I can see I've missed this area out and I've missed this rim on the inside. So I'm just going to pop that in very quickly. Again, I'm going to use one of those pieces of scrap paper to make sure I don't smudge the drawing. So that bottom part of the can. And then finally, I'm going to put this rim around there in. So now I'm ready to start shading. I can see one or two of these uh, indentations inside the can, but I'm going to come back and I'll do that later. So in terms of shading, so the first thing you need to look at is there are dark bandings up and down the side of the can for the light areas and dark areas. So these are dark and light strips and they very much depend on the lighting coming from above the can and what direction. So it might look different at home to how it looks in school. That's why a lot of boys will take a photograph of their can in school and then they'll work from the photo rather than the can at home. And also they're darker under these sections of the indentation. So they go dark around this way and they go dark and light in bands up and down the can. So I'm going to put in the ones I see first of all. So I can see one quite thick one coming down here. Again it might be different from the angle you were seeing it. Then I can see a slightly thinner one. So from my angle this one is dark, this one is slightly lighter, this one is a bit darker and then there's quite a wide light one. So I'm going to just stop there and then obviously there's more there but we'll only concentrate on this area. So the key now is to shade the individual sections. You could shade all over the top but then you'd lose some of these details. So if we talk about a couple of ways to shade. One, you can Add shading very carefully. So I said this is a slightly darker area. That's a bit darker too. It's a bit darker underneath there. And then this is lighter. So that's one way to shade. Of course, you lose some of the details. A better way to shade, this is why we've got a bit of uh, scrap paper. Take quite a dark pencil, this is a 4B. I'm going to put some lead down. Take my cotton wool bud. Pick up some of the dark lead on the bud. So I'm going to do the slightly, so this is a slightly lighter area coming down there. I want to all of it. 
give an idea. So that's my slightly lighter area. Slightly darker area, I've already got shading in. So if I then blend that in, that becomes darker. So I'm going to do a couple more. So that isn't quite as dark as that, so I need to put a little bit of pencil down and smudge it in. Some people like to smudge with their fingers, but of course the trouble is smudging with your finger. Your finger's too big to get in those smaller areas. So I'll just do one more section. I'll take a bit more from there. So I can build up the colour like that by going back and forth, but for the darker areas, I think it works more effectively for you to add a bit of tone to them and then add some more detail. So we've got our two bands, the darker and lighter areas. If you remember what I said, I said this from where I see it is a slightly darker area. So I'm going to shade in these very lightly, a bit darker at the bottom, very lightly, a bit darker at the bottom. If we come back to the idea that these are darker at the bottom. Then we've got this longer patch where there's no indentations then a bit lighter, darker at the bottom, a bit lighter. Okay. So that gives us a top section of the car. If you just left it like that, you wouldn't achieve a secure mark. So now it's a case of, now you've blended it, now you've actually smudged it with a cotton wool bud, it's working into it. So first thing we noticed is under here, under the indentations, it's a bit darker on the bottom of them. So the darker sections from the angle I can see it are quite dark. Even under the lighter sections they're quite dark too. So they're a bit not quite as dark. So it's starting to look more three-dimensional. This is where now the sharpness of your pencils comes in. So if we now start to gradually improve the shading. Let's just put a bit of shadow and detail on the rim area, in there, from my angle, it's almost black. It does get a bit lighter, but this area is very dark indeed. I'm still only using a 2B pencil. But it does get a little bit lighter. Not up a bit. Once you've got to that stage, you're at quite a good level. This is going to be a lot lighter, this band. So this band, I'm not going to add any shade in, and I'm just going to very lightly add a little bit of tone. A bit darker on this side. So, we'll just add a little bit more lead there. Pick up a little bit more. And finally, I think I'll just make those a tiny bit darker underneath. One of the ways to make your drawing go up to the next level is to try and sharpen up the detail in the drawing. Can be certainly done with a sharp 2B pencil, although 2B pencil is still quite a soft pencil. So what I've got here is a sharp HB pencil which will enable me to just carefully put down a few more details, a few sharper, more gradual shading, etc. So that's one way to do it. Okay, of course, let's do the top section. And even sometimes 
after I've smudged areas working over the top of them gives them a little bit more kind of life uh, to the drawing so these are the bits which are indented another way to work which is particularly effective is to use a telescopic pencil the advantage with a telescopic pencil is one you never need to sharpen it if it snaps if it goes blunt you can just press on the tip and secondly uh, it goes to a much sharper point so again I'm going to work into this with a telescopic pencil so I can put this very fine line in there for this extra rib which goes around there uh, I'm going to just add some very subtle shading to the edges so now you see it's starting to pick up a more three-dimensional form on the drawing So that's the equipment I used. I used a 2B pencil and a 4B pencil, but I didn't draw directly with a 4B pencil onto the can. I put some 4B lead there and used the cotton wool bud. And I added some more sharp details in with the HB pencil, but you saw me draw quite a bit at the end with a telescopic pencil in order to get those very fine marks and very fine details into the drawing.